epic matchups. Uh, none more so than I think the Ohio State Penn State game earlier today. Oh wow! I I had the pleasure of spectating that game, and was it a roller coaster? Ohio State underperforming today, but you know not taking anything away from uh, the teams that beat them. So some impact players here for the Bearcats: Brandon McGinn, Brett Liming, Ryan Engelman, and Corey Heitman, all seniors and founders of the club. Yeah, and that's one of the interesting storylines here with the Cincinnati team is that you've got so many guys that this club formed back in the 2018-19 season with so many of these kids being freshmen that joined and were part of the initial group that started Cincinnati Dodgers. And then on the other side, we got Ohio. we got some solid, solid core players here for Ohio, including Captain Terrence Checkett, Alex Janowski, a veteran, Max Stockel, and don't forget Caleb Arnold as well. We got stoppage right off the bat. Oh man, some animosity there. Some. And by the way, for the folks at home that are joining us, keep in mind, Ohio is right, two right. in Cincinnati this year. Two yeah. now. That's crazy to think about. And Cincinnati looks fired up. You can feel this is a buddy that I believe. Huge, huge catch there on the Bobcat side. Takes out Brett Lining early. Wow. And the ref does call it a catch confirmed. All right, let's see how the Bearcats rebound from this. Ryan Engelman and Will Hyatt on our side leading the charge here for the Bearcats. Matt Rosinski holding down the middle. Now, this is an interesting factor we have in Alday. The sun is going to be in UC space in this entire half. It's going to be a struggle. Yeah, and it, it's unfortunate that we've got the sun um, so late in the day here that that's going to happen. We won't see much of it. Thing, but in this game, it is a factor. And guess what? You got to deal with elements. You got to you play. Quick balls over call. Some miscommunication there on the Bobcat side. And you can see Captain Terrence Checkett is not thrilled with that call. He's trying to get a little clarification. Um, and look at Caleb Arnold there, founder of the club for Ohio. They were 0 29 in his first season. And now here they are. They're, they're contenders. They're, they're a legitimate contender for the national title. Um, haven't had their best day today. They lost to Nebraska earlier today, but they're two and zero against this team, and this team's one of the one, one of the absolute two. favorites. All right, team throw in the corner. Just misses the mark. Right, the Bearcats are organize another one here. Team throw looks like a few throws connected. Three, three quick outs there for, for the Bearcats. OU players. And this is something that I really want to see out of Cincinnati is their offensive, their offensive side of the game. How, how aggressive do they play offensively? Parents check advantage to get, get out of the way of a tight and throw and also uh, get the rebound counter there. I don't love the idea from Terrence to put himself out in the open like that, but he yeah. actually just wow, got hit right in the feet by a rookie, real high. One of the best rookies in the country is one of the many. Keep an eye on him. I'm seven years with Cincinnati. Right. Right there. Bearcats are rolling. They, they, they've got to worry about their numbers, though. They're getting picked off. Here. Matt Rosinski with a quick reset there. Blocked there by uh, Robbie Mitchell. By Will High and Mosley there. So I've got two impact players uh, on, on uh, the baseline for the Bobcats. Yeah, and, and the other thing is, Ohio is one of those teams that can catch their way back into the game, so it's it's never over with this this roster. Yeah, they roll with momentum. One catch, the huge swing there. One, two. Nice team throw there on the right side. Cincinnati offense is is just cooking. Up. Yeah, it seems they can do no wrong at this point. Check it with the throw. Nice reset. Ooh. And, and I'm loving what I'm seeing from Cincinnati in terms of the communication and, and not putting themselves in bad, like undesirable situations where one person got too far. They're working as a team. So that's the sort of communication that you would see back in the day from, you know, like the Saginaw Valleys of the world back in the day when they were gone. Maybe didn't have the most talent, but they were so well coordinated. And Cincinnati looks like that, combined with being a super talented team. 
Yeah, there's not a lot of good discipline, and that, that maybe stems from the coaching, you know, having a couple veteran guys. Yep, that's a great point. Uh, it's tough to close down. Humphrey just couldn't secure that catch there. Ryan is alone. There's a lone Bobcat. Garrett Negley is the last one left, I believe, here for Ohio. He's a great catcher. He's made some huge plays. Let's say he blocks it and now for the throw. I mean, there's no way. Not a pick. Not a pick. And there it is. There it is. Brandon again. One of the silent players for DC, but he's so good. Made a couple of huge plays at that point, including getting Terrence to check it out from Ohio. Brandon again may not be one of the loudest players on the, on the Bearcats roster, but he is so efficient. Yeah, I would agree with that here as we're uh, in the final round of matches today on day one of Nationals. After this round, we will have our final seating uh, determined, and, and we'll know what the bracket is going into championship Sunday. Yeah, we've seen a lot of upsets here. Uh, a lot of shifting in the standings. It's, it's kind of why you do the the format we have on day one of nationals. It's, it's to kind of you know correct maybe the issues from the, uh, the standings during the season. You know teams play more games than others. You don't have a regulated season, so day one of nationals kind of is, is forced to you know make the the top teams stand out and kind of shake up things the way they're supposed to. Yep, and if. Uh... If we take a look at the live seating real quick, so right now, again, this is not final. We got a whole game here, uh, but Michigan State is the one seed, Grand Valley at two, Cincinnati three, Akron up to four, uh, Penn State at five, JMU at six. Um, so some interesting seating. Ohio State all the way down to seven, and then Ohio here at eight. So if they can win this game, they would, they would definitely bump up. And Cincinnati as well. You got to think at three right now, but if they get this win, do they move all the way up to one? All right, nice rush there for the Bears. Brandon McGinn takes out. Player here right off the rip. Wow. And Sean O'Connell out by very quickly here. Caleb Barr with a nice counter. Oh, and you see Ohio not in a good spot here down only two balls on their side. No, and that's, that's seven for the communication issues they, they've faced today. As we get a stray dodgeball into the booth. Cincinnati just looks very comfortable on the front line. That's a that's very important thing to have here at this point. Corey Heidman takes out to the 15 there. Humphrey just blocked the blocking ball. We talk about Ryan Engelman's throw there. I mean, we, we, we know this guy's a great catcher, but I think an underrated part of his game is his arm, and his arm power. Yeah, he really had to develop that arm because teams wouldn't throw at him. They knew what he was about, so he had to develop the throwing skill. Parents check out the nice dodge there. Corey Heidman just missing the mark today. One thing to watch here with Brett Lyman, uh, one of the top players in the league this year, I would say. Uh, he's performed really well this season. He was followed the month earlier in the year. Ohio Dodgeball Cup, he was dominant. Um, watch the way that he throws. And for anyone that isn't particularly uh, familiar with Pink Stone, watch his arm slot. He goes over the top and really dips it down into the feet of his opponent. And it's so hard to block him or even track it for a pitch. He's just all the way. The way he takes it have a chance for you to go for a catch. And a line. You see it grow. I have not seen a team fall. I was going to say, I have not seen a team that looks this crisp all day. Oh, no. And another. Well, hi, there and uh, Brett Lyman with Team Pro. And another, another catch. We just mentioned his, his catching ability. And, you know, it hasn't been on display as much as he'd like. As you see all the way up on that trail line, just like, bro, I don't even know, ball doesn't matter. Two men left for Ohio, including a bad turn out to the over there. Front line for the well placed throw. Nice kill there. Takes out number eight, Logan Neff here. Announces the slow and the two throw takes him out. Wow. We are out. 
You quit for seven minutes in the game. Seven minutes into the game. Jacob Weber says it's got to be a record. Quick, a quick two points from Cincinnati. Yeah. You know, averaging three and a half minutes a point. Nice. Oh, you've got a rebound. What are you saying if you're in the OU huddle? I mean, they're they're bullying us. We can't get off our back line. And the reason why is that we never have had the ball. They didn't have ball advantage for one second at that point. If you want this to turn around, get the ball advantage and then play a little bit of that bully ball yourself. Get up to the front line and keep the offensive side of your game going. Right now they're playing two defense. Yeah, OU's got the arm to pull it off. They just they, they have more than four balls that entire point. Yep, and I mean when you're going up against a team as crisp as Cincinnati, you have no chance in that situation. They look like a well oiled machine here. Yep. Alright, here we go. Point number three, and that's a slide that should technically be a yellow card, or at least, at the very least, a warning. And they do, they, they call them out for it. Uh, yeah, you can't do that. I mean, that's, that's just endangering the safety of our players. You know, whether or not he meant to or not, it could have been a thing where he just, you know, tripped his foot a little bit. Meanwhile, the other side of the court, Ohio's jawing with the refs. I think there was something bad that went, up, went down for them there, there too. Corey Heidman was nice. Nice, well-placed cross. Takes out Van Fleet for uh, the uh, Bobcats here. This Cincinnati team is scary, scary team. You look up and down this roster. I don't see many weaknesses. A couple of huge kills over there, though. I yeah, while we're talking. As, as we're talking about how deep their roster is, two of their top guys go down, and we need that depth to actually show up on, on some rookies. Oh, Engelman doesn't drop for the catch. But Brett Ryman securing the catch there. Brings back in Isaiah Montgomery, the other captain here for the, the Bear Cats. Caleb Arm leading the charge. Hey, keep an eye also on number nine, Bobby Mitchell, another rookie for Cincinnati. He's not a, just taking a back seat. He's got a ball and he's leading the offense. Yeah, rookie of the month a couple uh, a couple months ago. Ohio still a couple stars on, on the court. You got the announcers, you got Caleb Arnold, you got uh, Stockel over here on the side. And he makes a decent throw there, just misses. And there you got Tyler Schaefer, another rookie for something. Oh, you on a 10 count now. Couple crosses, just missed the mark there. Tyler Schaefer threw a kind of a softball catch there. <laughs> Didn't really put enough on it. Thought he was looking away. This is still either team's point. That's a kill. That's a huge kill, actually. Now, Will Hyatt, for the hundred. Well played. Another kill. And you see they're getting ready to set up another team throw. But Limey throwing off, uh, showing off a couple of different arm slots there. Third throw just, uh, the, the, their team throws are just so crisp. Again, we mentioned Coach West leaders. Uh, Brandon is in as well. Uh, Robbie Mitchell takes out Humphrey there for the Bobcats, and they're down to two again. You can tell that this team is well coached, and they're just ready to go. Right. Send up a team throw, probably liming and tie it again. Yep, after, after how, uh, how difficult they played so far, I would be surprised to see another team throw. It's going to be team throws to kill. Yeah, absolutely. And they, and they know what they're about. He's driving goes down for the catch. Janowskis once again last man in. We're about to do 3-0. Just 10 minutes into the game, too. Crazy. That'll do it. 3-0 Cincinnati with authority. Cincinnati can do no wrong. Yep. 
taking on the home team as well, the Ohio Bobcats. Uh, tough showing for them so far. They also lost to Nebraska earlier today. I mean, this is going to knock them down in the standings. The question is, I just yeah, it's possible Cincinnati leapfrogs Grand Valley and becomes the two seed. Not 100% sure they will pull them in If you're Cincinnati, I think they want to get another point here, maybe start a rolling clock. Yeah, I think you could do that. I, if I'm if I'm Cincinnati's coaches right now, this is what I'm telling them. About. Two things. One, we're saving our arms for the rest of the game. Take your foot off the gas. And two, the reason why, Nobody's won a national championship on Saturday. That happens on Sunday. We did our business. We're up 3-0. I mean, don't let them come back, obviously. Take your foot off the gas in terms of our top guys throwing a one throw after another. we got to save our arms. It's a long tournament. We're going to play up to seven games if we make it all to the finals. No one's won a national title. Yep. We've seen a 3-0 comeback before, but with the way this game's gone, I'd be shocked if it's Landry with a little chest pass throw, takes out Neff early in the rush. Isaiah Montgomery just barely escapes being stamped. And you know, look at this, you've got four of the seniors with ball. So it looks like they're not taking a kid off the gas and get to the gas. Oh, oh two catches! Corey Heitman, Ryan Engelman, two catches. I just, I haven't seen them do a single thing wrong. This team is coming. This is this is the most efficient team I've seen. I've come to in a few games. As Ohio pushes up again, and there's a kill. Nice team throw. Check it goes up by himself, and he's got to work on that. Uh, sometimes you're losing stuff up, and there he's yelling at his teammate, "Hey, I need you to go up with me. If I'm by myself, I got no blocker. I'm dead." And that's exactly what happened. A blocker, or maybe maybe some of the ball to maybe show some dynamic action. Yep. Right there. Lyman's okay with that. Yeah, I mean, at this point, uh, if I'm a Cincinnati fan, I'm cheering for that because now he's pressing his arm in the outline. Absolutely. All right, Tito just missing some marks there. Still down. Go high it. Hey, somebody! To the barrel, bark in order. Somebody please shag a ball. Will Hyatt. Will Hyatt's got to be touching 70 as a rookie, which, oh which is pretty impressive. Right All right, Robbie Mitchell here. Will Hyatt, two rookies from Cincinnati. Uh, that's like they're about to set up a free throw. Oh, one of the other side of the team. Good throw there. Takes out Humphreys. Isaiah Montgomery having a solid point at this uh, point here. I had just hit the ball. Three on him. coming up on Caleb Arnold, a great catcher. He, he's got such good survivability. Yeah, he's a tough guy to get out. Tough guy to get out. I think Hyatt is on the line. A fortune in this game for him. And the thing that I'm most impressed about with Cincinnati is this. When most teams get up to the throw line, they lose their communication. Cincinnati's comfortable talking even up at Robbie Mitchell is fairly good. Take out Caleb Brown on a well-placed team throw. That was Mitchell's ball that hit the mark. Oh, and another kill. Hyper stamps are right, right in the logo. Garrett Nebley, last one left. Great catcher, great survivor, but... Oh, dropped by Heitman. You see, that's the difference between a disciplined team. Robbie Mitchell went to that throw line. Okay, we'll see you block, maybe block it. Yeah, no, I 100% agree with what you're about to say there. Instead of trying to be a hero there, he waited. He's a rookie, but that's not a restraint. That's coaching. That's coaching and that's team discipline uh, from the seniors on down, so. And here they go. And that's a catch. They have to catch Jacob Pepper. Haven't seen many catches this game. No. And a great reset throw there. Neff comes back in. Just like that, it's uh, three on two. We could see Ohio win again. Those are dead. Oh, and Montgomery takes it out. 
We we're back to one man left. Three on one here. Nice reset throw. Here comes the full throw. That's not going to work. Uh, maybe rushed it a little bit. Yep. If, if I'm Cincy, I'm going to we'll get all the way back. That's it. Yeah, 100%. Ball's, Ball's over. over. Yeah. So for everyone watching at home, uh, we got shot clocks going for both teams at all times. Timeout called by Cincinnati as well. Um, it, it, if you don't throw within your shot clock, it's just a simple ball's open. And that just happens. So Ohio didn't throw within the, the 10 seconds that they had. Cincinnati gets all the balls on their side. Yeah, and that's just a rule that we implemented a long time ago just to, you know, avoid stalling in games. Keep the action up, keep the play style up. And no stalling here from the Cincinnati Bearcat team up 3 0. And keeping their foot on the gas, trying to get it to 4 0. They might continue to go until halftime and then really rest at that point, but we'll see. I, I think that part of it is Cincinnati wants to send a message, not just to Ohio, but to their own team, that we are the best team in the country. They're 0-2 against Ohio. Michigan State is picked to be the, the champion more than Cincinnati was. I think that they want to sort of send a message to the entire nation that, hey, we're the best team, and we're here to win this week. All right, we got some blood on the court, it looks like, so we're going to have a quick pause. Clean that up first before anything else happens here. Oh, we got a quick pause. Take a look at some of the scores here. Uh, last round, we had Grand Valley beating Ohio State 4 to 1. That was supposed to be a good game. It was a solid game, but Ohio, Ohio State just a tough day for them, losing to Penn State and Grand Valley. It's going to knock them down in the, in the standings for sure. Michigan State beat Akron 3 to 1. Sounds like a solid showing by Akron to keep that close. I mean, MSU's the number one team in the country. Um, and then moving on down, let's take a look at some other games. Nebraska beat Penn State three to one. I didn't know that until just now. That's a result. Wow. You and L had a good showing today. Yes, they have. And Penn State just beat Ohio State. Like, yeah. And Ohio State beat Cincinnati the last time they played, and Cincinnati looks untouchable. There are so many teams that have an actual argument for being a title contender. Here comes the team throw, it looks like. Three on one. None of the throws connect. He's so good at dodging. And another one where he dodges all four. This incredible survivability there by Garrett Negri. He's a junior for Ohio University. Solid player. Ground first, and he stays alive. We got at least a 10 to 10 minutes here. 945 to go in the half. Damn time. Ooh. Good block. I think they will rip that one back. Probably thought it was be a team throw. He, he knows he wants, he wants to catch him. An elbow right in the back. He, he's so good at getting low and, and fending himself into a tough position, but he puts his body on the line every time. And another catch! Brings back his max shackle. Oh, and a good reset there. Sterling Gouch goes down on that on that thrown catch there. Max Stopper, one of the best players too. Another catch, easy money. Ohio, are they back in this game, folks? Yeah, you got Alex Nowskis, Max Stickle. Wow, they got some stars in the game now. Another team for a great job, and now we're back the other way where maybe Isaiah Montgomery's gonna be the hero. And a catch from him! Who Back that, and forth dodgeball. Who did that bring in? Brandon again. Oh boy. All right. So both sides got a. So so both sides have, have at least one veteran on the court. So this is gonna be some fun dodgeball. In a nice team out of it. I'm that up. Alex Janowski is one of the best survivors in all of dodgeball, I'd say. And he's gonna have to throw again. Makes the throw. It's a good reset. Oh, Brandon again. Good placement. I like it. Here we go. I like their spacing as well. Nice and wide. Good throw coming up. Nope. Wow, and Janowskis takes him out. He's still in. I don't know what anyone was cheering about. There's a block. Yeah. Oh, and he goes for a catch. Brandon again. Isaiah Montgomery and Brandon again touch that point. 
And that was the difference between this being a ball game going into halftime and it being a 4 0 now. Four great points. Great fight from Ohio. Four now. points in such a short amount of time. Yeah, and that last one took a long time. It felt like yeah. it's crazy. Um, wow. So we still got 724, so we still got another point. And honestly, I would, I would bet. Well, let's see who's in and who's out. I'd have to say that you sit, you sit at least three, three good starters. It, it looks like they're putting their full regular starting lineup out there. Isaiah Montgomery's uh, notable sitting. Oh, okay. It looks like that's it. No, oh, yeah. So Sterling Gouch is in. He's usually not a starter for them. It looks like they got maybe one or two non-starters in the game, but for the most part, they got. You got some stars in the game. So, yeah. Wow. I, I'm not sure what what the coaches are saying in the, in the, uh, in the huddle. They might be keep your foot on the gas on the gas for a half. Let's see what we can do for one half, and then we're done. Yeah, I mean, it's just basic is more the same. West Peters has to be happy for the result this season. Another good rush there for the Bearcats. Not sure what happened there. Yeah, it's just good to see. Oh, that's going to be a team catch. It is. Yeah, I mean, if this if this game was three to one right now, we'd be back. Four zero, Cincinnati in control. Great showing from them in this game. Like my counterpart said, I think that this is the most uh, in control, the most effective attempt to get to the park. Rare miscommunication from the Bearcats. Two, two throws there missed the mark. Now they have some time to regroup, maybe reel it in. Nice throw by Ryan Engelman. Oh. Uh, five and a half left uh -oh. in this half. I guess check. It looks like he might have hurt his ankle or something. He's uh, going back to the back. No bueno. Maybe he's cramping. He's yeah, cramping a little bit. Yeah. Long days here. Cincinnati, their first year as a club back in 2018-19. Some of those guys that were part of that first team. Brett Lyman right here. We also have uh, Ryan Engelman, Brandon McGinn, Corey Heitman. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice to go there. You've just got so much. The thing about Cincinnati is they've got a fantastic uh, balance of their effort. Looking yeah. yeah. Top to bottom, not much disparity in the depth. Right, right. For the starting. Yeah. All over the top. Going down, can reel that one in. Pushing up here, it looks like. Uh, Tyler Schaefer, Brandon McGinn, Matt Rosinski. This is another great rugby from Cincinnati. Uh, oh, another catch. And Engelman with the kill. They're so quick in transition as well. We haven't seen them after they off their back line. Touch the ball, also looking at the doing this. It's a, this is a team that has very few weaknesses, and, and they just seem full through every aspect of the game, whether it's a defensive strategy, offensive strategy, any of all of them. Took a nice kill there. Ohio with the throw, a nice piece of throw there. Now Ohio moves up quick. Good look there. Check it with a miss. Will Hyde goes down though on this. Uh, it looks like Caleb Arm knocked him out. Great throw from him. Matt Rosinski pushes up. Ooh, he was in a tough spot there, but he got out of it. Yeah, Ryan Engelman kind of showing some dynamic movement, making a second guess. Maybe the uh, counter there. Backhand for a reset for Kenneth Arnold. Ooh, 
nearly got a two time in there, huh? I feel like we've seen the full game action. We're not even going to have to. Nice suicide kill by uh Brown. I think it was Brown. Check it with another throw. He's got a brace on his hand. I think he's very hand this dude. Uh, that's not ideal. Heard his from a practice pretty into this. But playing through it. Oh, and Engelman with the drop. The rare drop by Ryan. I mean, if I'm Ohio here, look, we got two minutes. We gotta hurry up right now. We're gonna get back into this game. Get a point before half time. Otherwise, it's it's gonna be tough. Yeah, when a team goes up 4-0. Oh, oh and a nice pass by Mosley. Mosley, another rookie, I believe. Yeah. Devin yeah, Mosley, pressing this. Talking to Corey Hyten before the game, he said, Mosley's one of those freshmen that was such a great mind for the game already. And another one that sucked him up from a nice pack. Well played throw, great catch. Corey Hyten draws a throw. Tyler Schaefer later protects him. Brandon McGinn and Tyler Schaefer. Schaefer called out actually. Uh... Oh, wow. Sneaky speed on this throw. Yeah. Yeah. Nice, nice action there by uh, Robbie Mitchell. Draw some throws. Yep, Kevin himself a lot. It's like two or three throws on his leg. Blocked it about a pile. Now we're at one minute to go and a half. Looks like this one is gonna have to be in four minutes. Yeah, it's tough. And again, just for the viewers at home, this Ohio team is not a bottom team. This team is a very good team. Very good team. Very good team. Very good team. Power from Ball's over. So one interesting thing, one interesting thing here, um, when we're looking at the seeds going in, into Championship Sunday bracket play, uh, this is the last round game uh, for those that weren't aware. Um, so assuming Cincinnati comes away with this win, uh, they will jump all the way to number one. Wow. That's huge. And I believe that means, and this is spicy, we'll see the Grand Valley JMU quarterfinals. That's wow. going to be an absolute thing. Jam oh, I could be wrong. I could up. I apologize for jumping the gun on that. JMU. Since their last goal was updated, they've moved up to five seed. Okay. So actually, since we will jump up to one, we're speculating here. Michigan State and, and Grand Valley, who are one and two right now, will both shift down to five. So Grand Valley will go to three, Michigan State will go down to two. Uh, and then you're gonna you're gonna see again speculating, and a lot of this could change. Um, Cincinnati would be facing off against a team like Nebraska in in the quarterfinals. I'm for that. Oh, absolutely. Michigan State would be going against a team like Penn State, who just beat Ohio State today. I'd enjoy that game as well. Uh, Grand Valley has three seed would be taking on Ohio State again if this stands. Um, that game ended four to one, but I mean Ohio State. They were in every point. They were in some points. Like that's. You know, Ohio State's got depth, and again, Sunday is when, when you win the championship, not Saturday. And if Ohio State comes out a different team, to me, who knows? And then the 4-5 matchup, Akron against JMU. Akron's best season ever, being ranked fourth going into Sunday. That's incredible. JMU, they're a solid team, so athletic. I think you're going to see a clash in styles of that game, see who wins. Uh, JMU with their fast pace and their uh, athletic team at top to bottom. But Akron playing smart, playing controlled. Last time those two teams faced off, I can come out back with the win. And that was back in the fall? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That is, that's another great fight. That's a lot of speculation. That's assuming we don't see any more. Ooh, and I think Spirit might have gotten right there, but it's really nice. Excited to continue to grow as we expand the league. 
hopefully get to the West Coast at some point, get into Texas here soon. There's been a lot of talk about some potential ideas for getting into the Texas uh, schools, but it's it's just exciting to see, and, and who knows what this will look like five years from now. But Looks like we're about to uh, have the second half go underway. Now there will be a rolling clock. When a team gets a, a 4 0 lead, there, uh, there are no stops to play for timeouts. Uh, 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 you don't stop, you don't stop for, for resetting the, the, the points or anything. But. Yep, so we'll have a running clock here for the second half. Uh, as we get underway here, Ohio is going to try and maybe get a little. A little bit of momentum going into championship Sunday at the very least, huh? Try to build some confidence, maybe. Yeah. In, in, in talking to Caleb Arnold, uh, the guy that founded the club, and he's in the he's, he's a graduate student. He talked about, I asked him, what do you want to leave in terms of your legacy? How do you want to see this go? And he said, I want to leave tomorrow. One, having competed well, and two, on a high note, in terms of my attitude and my team's attitude. He wants his team to have a good attitude no matter what, and he wants them to compete at the highest level. And, he, and, he, and he's so proud of the fact that their first year they were only playing the worst team in Dodgers. And now here they are, hosting Nationals. They've been consistently mentioned as a title contender. And yes, it's a tough game for them, but their story is not fully written. Tomorrow is when that, that happens. Excited to see how it goes. Yeah, while, while we were discussing at uh, Cincinnati, got a couple quick outs. Dwindling the, uh, the baseline of the Bobcats. Nice play by Bobby Mitchell. Oh my, what a nice catch. catch. I think he should be safe as well. Yep, it's a great call. Blocked there by Corey Heitman. Over the top throw to just arc. I'm surprised that since he's a good player, uh, ball to be but, yeah. but at the same time, you look at the roster, who would you take? They've got, so much there. Depth. They've got so much depth that it's like, yeah. why is that good player still thrown? Oh, wait, the whole team. Like anyone that's in the game is a good player. And I will say this as well, the COVID, COVID obviously hurt our league and, 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 and hurt a lot of these clubs in terms of their depth. I haven't seen a team this deep since before COVID. It be a bigger loss. So there was B teams were a more uh, common thing back then as well. We had clubs that had 40, 40 people in it. Cincinnati, they, their club isn't that big, but they're wow, But their depth is, is impressive. All right, just like that. Both sides are even, eight apiece. And not that you want moral victories, but one thing to keep in mind from Kyle they've been in several, they've been a few of these. Cincinnati was dominant with Since then, Ohio could have won a couple of points there towards the end. And they're in this final spot, so it's not like they're completely outmatched. All right. Two quick outs there for the Bearcats. Give them a two man advantage. Nice block there by Jeff Rose. Cincinnati, not really uh, uncomfortable in any of these points. Nice hit by Matt Rosinski. All right, Ohio now in a 10 count.
looks like Cincinnati's exercising some demons here against against the Bobcats. Kind of, you know, building that confidence that maybe they had one more check mark for the regular season. They never beat Ohio. One fantasy dodgeball to be a right Team throw hits the mark there for the, for the Bearcats, Brandon McGinn and Matt Rizinski. The two players we've seen be the last players in a lot of these points out to now get the angle here. And another dodge. We saw it in the days of the Grand Valley State Maker. We're seeing it now as a Bobcat. I'll be interested to see how OU rebuilds after losing a couple players, long term guys. Nice team pass there by the Bearcats. Saves Corey Heighton and brings back into the crowd. Ready? Bearcats again. <laughs> oh, he's out. <laughs> he somehow got to help. Wouldn't be surprised. Reset up there. Doesn't really put himself in any risk. Kind of reminds me of like how Ben Smart plays the throw super well. Right him against him to beat himself up top to that. That's such a fun way to see it. It's kind of like it's such a nice momentum and actually just the play of two person swings. And being a player that's from like Beckles, that's not something that really like stands out because it's just part of the game. Like, throwing a catch stands out, but if it's something like that, it's not going to stand out, but it's such a value. Oh, oh and he dropped couldn't it. reel it in. 5 0. Got an 8 minute point there. And you want to bet if they're going to put in some uh, bench players at this point? Because we've been. That's what, I would, that's what I would do. We've been speculating it for like three or four points. And they haven't done it yet. And I don't know if it's just like I don't know what it is. It's like, oh, no tactic by the coaches or something else, but they've been pedals in the mountain the whole time. I think that this is the time. Liming going to the bench, Titan going to the bench. Real nice, high nice display of showmanship there between Rosinski and check it. Yep. At the end of the day, we're all competitors. You know, you got you gotta have some good sportsmanship, you gotta respect your your opponents. Yep, and also with this sport where it's at right now, like you got to rely on on uh, teams being able to be good, good sportsmen to each other because they got to ref each other's games and all that. So once again, to talk about the uh, standing for tomorrow, if Cincinnati wins, they move all the way up to the one seed. Michigan State would move down to two. Grand Valley would move down to three. If everything else stays as it is, it looks like Grand Valley would take on Ohio State in the 3 6 game. JMU Akron has a 4 5. Akron beat them the last time those two teams faced, as Toby mentioned earlier. Cincinnati at the 1 seed would be taken on either Nebraska or Ohio, but Ohio's probably going to move down. Also, Penn State may move up because they won today right. or, or, or are winning this round. So we'll have all that info within the next hour or so. Uh, that'll all get posted on social medias. But as of now, as it stands, Cincinnati, if they win this game, move up to be the number one overall seed. Um, Moving Michigan State down to two, Grand Valley down to three. All right. 
six point here underway. Looks like OU sitting some players out as well. Probably the smart thing to do at this point. I mean, you gotta you gotta think about the bigger picture here. It's safe. It's safe. It's safe. But this is going to be a great opportunity for some of these guys that, that don't get as much action. They get in here and play in the biggest stage, national featured court. Here. Yeah, get some breath. Let's go! Oh, and that's going to be a cat? Yeah. Yeah, that's a cat. That's Gavin Mosley again. He's made a few good catches for that. Man, I, I would love to see the stats of some of these players plus okay. Yeah, this, this Cincinnati OU game has really had stats for a lot of the players. Engelman's got to be, what, plus 14 at least? Yeah. Yeah. Think about all his catches. Yep. Pat's counting as a plus two. Another good team throw there in Cincinnati. Yeah, a lot of Ohio. A lot of back up from Ohio gets to get some We'll be back at it tomorrow morning. Let's spend everything today. Yeah, Nashville is a different beast because most tournaments you play, it's one day, 40 matches, you're in and out. Nashville is a huge day. Some of these teams, you know, they, they, they average you know, five or six games. You know, the deeper the deeper you go, you, you got to preserve your energy. If either of these teams were to make the finals, they would have to win. They would have to play seven games, for seven hour long. Game. This is a lot of time. Oh, nice kill there, Stone Gouch. Making up for a lackluster first half, but a great look there on that throw. Good timing. Woods pushes up on the 50 yard line. First time, so I believe he's an odd rookie for the, the Bearcats. Closing on 13 minutes left here in this half. Gotta expect the team throw coming, maybe. A quick thank you to our sponsors for uh, Donated so to let us get a production company here to uh, uh, take a couple of masterpieces. We have a uh, Taylor Management Group, Ignite, uh, Ignite Design, Brian Eagle, Weird and Bentley Makes Music, and uh, Brian Swissley Farm out of New York. Yep, thanks again to all our sponsors. If you support the NCDA, we'd love to you support the sponsor organization. Low point here. Looks like we're going to find down this last bubble. There's a lot, of, a lot of back and forth. Yeah, a lot, yeah. A lot of back and forth with some bench players. But just, they're not used to uh, the action. You're not going to see as much of them. Still a lot of talent on the floor. Once again, like we mentioned earlier, it's up to like 30 percent of these people didn't play the ball until just less than a year. They're in their first year. Of they're here now. Hopefully having a blast. When you've been playing as long, been the game as long as we have, you kind of lose sight of where you once were. You know, like the, the, the learning curve, the jumping in skill. And a lot of these players, as you said, just learn how to play this year. It's fall. It's so new to them. It's so new to them, and they have so much room to grow still. And that's, that's one of the exciting things about college basketball. Another unique thing that I don't think people talk about quite a bit. It's unlike a lot of uh, semi-pro dodgeball formats where like you, you can pick who your teammates are and play until you never get the punch. There's a hard cast, there's a point of this on this team. Players playing on this team. And for so many of them, they thought uh, this weekend is last to put on their most representative school. And that's just something different. It's a different level of basketball that I think as to the... That's the, the interesting uh, 
enough storyline to follow the college Godfather. Yeah, and you know, adding on to that aspect, you know, it's one of the one of the main reasons why some teams have success is they're recruiting, you know, year after year, rebuilding talent, fostering talent. Yeah, in, in building in building a program, building a culture, and it's all on you, the players. And, and, and I think that that's an interesting point too. With like these players are doing this all school year long, like, two or three practices a week, traveling with their teammates on the weekend. If not, just you get to choose a couple friends. Right? You don't get to choose your teammates as much as your teammates choose you by you recruiting. And it's a constant battle of recruiting, continuing to keep your program at a level where it can compete nationally. And that's something that all these teams, you know, it, it's. It's an aspect of college stock. It's not going to do a thing. I'm, it's, it's all about building a program and, and kind of fostering that success. Right? That it's such a huge part of these teams' success. And, and you really don't get that aspect of some other college stock. Yeah, that's why you see some like perennial programs like the Grand Valley, like Michigan State, you know, the CMU of old, Saginaw Valley of old. You know, you see that because of the culture. The fostering of talent. Absolutely. And this is one of the ways you do that. You let you, you let your rookies shine. You let your, you know, uh, maybe second team uh, get get some get some reps in. Yeah. And, and the other thing, you got you got people on a lot of these schools. These schools, there's people that aren't at the tournament that have played in the past but aren't on the team anymore. But this matters to the world to them that their school continues to succeed. It's, it's like. So many players, after they graduate, they still want to see their legacy live on. They want to see that their school continue to either even out, you know, outperform what they did while they're in school. So many of these these players that stand, they're playing for the are interviewing players earlier. Josh Kramer, Michigan State head captain, who mentioned that he said, I've been getting tech people all week long. Hey, we're pulling for you. Hey, I won't be there, but I'm happy to have a chance. And that, and that sort of, that aspect of a team culture is, is, is also so important that it lives on beyond just when you graduate college. Meanwhile, let's say the house best thing to come Yeah. It is. Jacob Weber can install the point out. 7.52 to go. And then we are done with day one of NASA's program. It's been a long day, but it's been an exciting day. Not much else I'd rather do on a Saturday. Oh, I could have been lying this whole time, folks. Uh, now we're getting word that potentially the rankings after this would be Cincinnati passing Grand Valley, but not passing Michigan State. Ah. So if that's the case, you got MSU at one, Cincinnati at two, Grand Valley. Yeah. Um, and in that scenario, Grand Valley at two would probably play Penn State. They're the seventh seed. Or, uh, I mean, Grand Valley at three would still be facing uh, Ohio State. But then you'd have Cincy playing against Penn State, and then Michigan State would either be taking it against Nebraska, maybe in Ohio. Uh, again, all of this could change. So we'll find out within the next hour. And I'm excited to see how the bracket plays out. Cincinnati and Penn State had a pretty good overtime game uh, at, the, at Akron's War a couple months ago. Wow, that's a good point. Holy cow. We, we've got so many potential uh, outcomes tomorrow just because there's so many teams that have a shot. I'm going to go out on the left. Oh! I'm going to go out on the left. Tomorrow's going to be the best day of college dodgeball. Is that a hot take? Um, no. No, I agree with you. Oh, oh my sir. No look throw from Terrence Check. He's back in the game. I think he was pretty annoyed by the way the team played in this matchup. Uh, just, just the fact that they didn't do well. Um, and he's back out there kind of getting rid of some of that extra drafting, huh? Yeah, it appears so. Cincinnati only having a few. Uh, Mainstays on the roster there. Matt Rosinski looks like he's getting 
Getting some work in the back baseline. Maybe work on catching a bit. Wow, what a catch. All right, Cincinnati moving up again. Oh, no. Jack had got to zone by a cupcake throw from Kevin Steva. Well, we were looking at just a quarterfinal matchup, but then you also got to think about that was just bad semifinal matchup. We're in that with the Cincinnati team right now. Ooh. Mythic State team. Yeah. But again, I could be completely wrong. Who knows? Who yeah. knows? I don't have, I'm not a computer. I don't have all the math in my head. These, this stuff could all change. Under five to go now here. Still there. I think we'll get one more point. Nice catch there. Kevin Steve, he hasn't seen much action in this game. He actually transferred some of my Yeah. This is with a couple transfers. Jacob Weber, who played earlier, transferred from Akron. Kevin Steve. You could argue uh, Wes, Wes Peters and Brandon Hingman are the best coaches that didn't transfer portal uh, acquisition. While we were talking, Ryan Engelman secured another catch. Brother of Coach Ben. Was that uh, Oliver? He just got some confidence up there as he dropped the catch. Maybe too much confidence. Yeah. We were trying to force something here. Yeah, I think the craziest outcome in these, in these final seeding, accurate. They lost to Grand Valley today, lost to Michigan State. But they had such a strong season, they won so many games that they stay up. That's what happens like when you when you play good teams, like losing to good teams doesn't affect you as bad. Yep. And, and it really goes to show that the regular season does matter. And Akron put in the work during the regular season, they should get rewarded for it. It's a strong game. And that was on that one. And a team catch. Ball's over call. Yeah, Cincinnati really been in the driver's seat for some higher math. It's at the point they dropped, but after this game, let's see if we can get a quick interview with the player from Cincinnati. Yep, yep. Two minutes ago here at nine o'clock. Hard, hard to pick a standout from uh, Cincinnati's roster. Nice team throw. Hey, you know what? Let's throw in uh, Will Hyatt, rookie for Cincinnati. Let's see his, uh, I like that. Huh? Hill, that'll do it, folks. Yeah, I'd say I'd say the line ended up here. Six to one final. Cincinnati with the W. Uh, ends the day for them, ends the day for everyone, in fact. Um, they will they'll be a, one of the top seeds here going into the uh, bracket play tomorrow. We'll get those updated soon. Post on our social media. Look out for that soon. Uh, pretty excited to see what the bracket is and how it goes tomorrow. In the meantime, let's grab a quick interview with the uh, Cincinnati rookie.
All right, I'm here with uh, Rookie of the Year candidate Will Hyatt. Will, coming into Nationals, there was maybe some doubt about uh, you know the Bearcat roster. You know, he dropped a late a late match to Ohio State to be in the finals, the Ohio Dodgeball Cup. What kind of adjustments have you made, you know, from then to now? I think people just aren't trying to do too much. We have a full roster now, and a lot of the rookies, like Jacob Ziles, number, I actually forget, 16 maybe, he really stepped up today. Isaiah Montgomery played a big role today, making a catch there, three on one. That was really big for us. So just people making plays when they're supposed to. Yeah, so being one of the top, you know, standout rookies uh, of this season, you know, how have they, you know, kind of brought you up to speed in such a quick amount of time? I've been playing sports my whole life, so I feel like that kind of helps get, like, the pacing down and all that stuff. But I feel like this year was really about developing the rookies. I was just talking to Wes over there, and he said that was a big priority this year because we had a lot of seniors leaving this year. So yeah. get the rookies going, start something new for us. What are your expectations going into day two? I mean, we still don't know how the bracket's going to shake out, but you know, it's it's, it's very possible you guys you guys are going to be the two seed and we'll have a pretty favorable matchup. But you know, what are you looking forward to come day two? I've never had a day two, so I'm just excited. I, our team's been saying like the whole year, finals are it's it's a loss. Yeah, if we don't make it there, so we're going for it all. So this. Glad you brought that up. This being your first Nationals, how has it, you know, either met your expectations or exceeded them? I'd say it's exceeded. Like, all the tournaments before I thought were awesome. But just to have, like, all the teams here, all the extra stuff, like the women's match, the alumni, all-star game, I think it's just really cool. Great. So good luck to you the rest of, uh, you know, rest of the tournament. Good luck to, uh, tomorrow. And uh, go celebrate with your team, man. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate it. Congrats. Congrats.